Uh, you've been out on the field quite a few times here at the start of things. I know we're still early here in spring training, but what's your first impression of this 2024 squad so far? Uh, I'm excited. I think um, these guys really believe they have something to prove, and they're ready to do it. Um, I will tell you, we had a large number of guys the entire month of January over at the Himes Complex voluntarily working out, getting in shape, ramping it up, um, more so than I ever remember, and I don't think it's a coincidence. I think they're really ready to go. Hal, a couple of your players have hey, hi, Hal, um, talked about how embarrassed they were last year and how that motivated a lot of yep. them to you know, show up early at the complex, et cetera. Organizationally, how much of a motivator was that for you guys? I was embarrassed. We were all embarrassed. I mean, I don't think there's one person in this organization that wasn't embarrassed. Um, I have no doubt for them that it was a big motivation. Um, you know, like I said, they believe they have something to prove after that disaster last year. Uh, and they're going to be, I mean, look at, look at some of the guys. I mean, they just, they're already in great shape, a lot of them, because their spring training started, you know, six weeks ago uh, in earnest. Almost every day they were there. So. Um, we take it seriously. Last year was an embarrassment. We're all embarrassed. In your mind, why will things be different this year? I just think it's a different mindset. I think, to his comment, I think they really, I don't want to keep repeating myself, Meredith, but they, they I'm just telling you, they feel like they have something to prove to the fans because they know they let the fans down. It was embarrassing, and it was embarrassing for everyone. You guys made a bunch of moves over the offseason. The luxury tax payrolls are already over the highest threshold. Do you feel like you have something to prove to fans with the way this offseason's gone? I think we have something to prove to fans after last year. Absolutely. No doubt. When no you doubt. look back on last season and evaluate it with some hindsight, what do you think went wrong? Well, look, clearly we had a lot of injuries. That's All teams have injuries. We had, you know, not the most in baseball perhaps. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't look. But we had a lot. But the position players, I mean, too many of our good position players just did not play up to their potential. We, we couldn't score runs. And we had a near zero run differential the entire year, and you're not going to win a World Series with that. You're just not. Now, what do you think Juan Soto adds to this team, and do you think you can keep him long term? Well, I, I don't want to get in too much into that because, you know, that's, he just got here, and I just met him two days ago. Um, he's he's going to mean a lot. Um, I got to talk to him briefly on the field, very intelligent young man and obviously very motivated and very successful already, um, already a world champion and uh, already has just went right into the clubhouse and, and fit right in. So I think he's going to be great. And, uh, you know, seeing him and Judge and Stanton, two, three, four, whatever the order in the lineup, uh, it's going to be pretty special. Do you, there think, is still free. do you think that you have enough on this roster? Or are you inclined to keep looking adding some free agent out there still looking for work? I think we have a championship caliber team right now, but we haven't stopped looking to improve, and we never will. I mean, you know, we're able to do whatever we're able to do all the way up to the trade deadline. That's a long time from now. So what's your feeling uh, about Snell? I'm not going to get into free agents. I'm just going to tell you that we continue to look at a lot of different options. Um, and, you know, given where we are payroll-wise, any addition to the club is going to be a costly one, but I'm still willing to consider anything that comes my way, anything Cash and his team brings my way. I, I'll leave it at that. But we are not done trying to improve this team. How do you feel about the fact that it shouldn't, shouldn't take a $300 million payroll to, to win a championship? I still what, agree with that, what, yes. Pushed you over the edge. This well, we didn't have a whole lot of money come off the payroll. I think we started this off season at 250, right around 245, 250. So it's not going to take, you know, not going to take much to get up to 300. So. Do you feel like you have enough pitching right now? I think our starting rotation is very good, yes. Uh, depth. Injuries, you know, we, we lost King and, you know, we lost some pitchers in the Soto trade. And um, that's why, you know, a lot of the other trades we were looking at, everybody seemed to want guys like Warren and Hampton, and I just wasn't willing to, to part with them. Um, so the depth is somewhat concerning to me, but the rotation as it stands is a very good one. And, you know, we still have Warren at AAA. At some point you're going to see him this year probably. Uh, Luis Hill uh, and a few others. Tell us through what you're thinking on the Soto trade. You know, obviously it was a big price to pay. Why did you say yes? Oh, I, I, I mean, he's a generational player. I mean, I, I you know, how it, the opportunity arose where the Padres needed certain things that we had. And, you know, I don't know how you can say no if, if you're able to do it financially um, and able and willing to give up what they're asking for, which was not easy for me to give up those guys. Um, but I don't know how you could say no 
if both those things are possible, to get a player like that, even if it is for one year. Hopefully it's not. Um, but that's not something I was going to say no to if both those factors fell into place. There's still things we're looking at, you know, whether it's trades or signings. Uh, I'm not saying anything's going to happen. I'm not saying something's not going to happen. Um, but I'm, I'm still willing to improve this team however we can. Why, uh, why so fl is, is it last year that's really motivated you to be so throttled down as far as that mindset? Because I know you've been leery of it, at least in the past, of going. Well, look, I, again, we didn't have much money come off last year. So when you start the postseason at 250, you know, I start the off season at 250, it doesn't take much to start working your way up. Do I think I should have a $300 million team to win a world championship? No, I don't. But again, we, we started at a pretty high level already. Um, and, you know, Soto was a, was a big addition, but big dollars as well. To retain Soto, it's probably going to cost more than what you gave Judge last offseason. Are you comfortable paying someone more than your captain? You know, that's, I, I guess that's an interesting question, but not one I've, I've thought about. Um, I'm not sure Judge would care if we got Juan Soto for, for many years to come. Um, but look, the market is what the market is, and he's going he's gonna to cost what he costs. We we'll just have to wait and see. Was, yeah. was that something you considered with your offer to Yamamoto with regards to Garrett? Uh, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I just think, you know, sooner or later, as all of you know, in these things, you've got to go pencils down, right? I mean, and I probably went higher than some of our baseball people would have gone, but I felt it was important to the fan base and to our chances this year to really make a run and, and try to get them. Uh, but I just felt, you know, 300 million, I, I just felt right or wrong that the bidding was going to continue. And I, you know, 300 million was a very good offer. And I think a lot of our fans agree with that. So is there anything ongoing right now that's close? You said that you're willing to do anything that if cash comes to you with or consider it. Is there anything in front of you right now that you are considering? I w well, we're looking at possibilities. Is there anything that's close? I would not say there's anything that's close, no. And I would also reiterate what I said earlier, which is you know, we've, we've already given up some very good prospects and the major leaguer in King this year. And um, you know, I'm going to be very hesitant to give up um, the kind of guys like Warren and Hampton and Spencer Jones that have been asked about a lot. Well, forgive me for repeating it, but every 24 hours is a fresh rumor that you guys are about to sign Snell. I mean, it seems imminent. not going to get not going to get into any any specific players. Not going to get any specific players. Does it affect your thinking when Aaron Judge says he thinks and hopes the team will continue to add? Well, he and I talk about it, but he also understands where I sit and the decisions I have to make and the reasons I have to make or not make those decisions. So we have a very good relationship. Soto, and given that how much you had to give up to get him, does that up the, the thinking of, of adding to this year's roster? I, no, no. Um, I want to add to this year's roster if, if the opportunity arises because we are always going to continue to try to improve. No team's perfect, right? There's no perfect team. Um, so there's always work to be done. And, you know, opening day is not pencils down, right? I mean, you know, August 1st or whatever the date is, is pencils down. So we got a lot of time during the season if we have a need to, to fill it. And we're going to just keep exploring possibilities and considering things, as we always do every year, um, as the days and weeks progress. From do you your like impressions of your meetings with Yamamoto, if you offered $325 million, do you think it would have made a difference? I, that's pure hypothetical. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Was it too much for you to consider 325? I, I felt the 300 was a very, very good offer. How yeah. disappointed were you that it didn't go that way? I mean, the, yeah, for, I mean what we reports were that yeah. it looked like you? Yeah, we, we were disappointed. We had a great meeting with him. He's a great young man um, and obviously a great player. Um, but again, for a player that's never played in the major leagues before, that's a lot of money. And uh, sooner or later, you have, to, you have to have a limit. You have to have a limit because of circumstances like that. I think we have a championship caliber team right now. That being said, then where would those additions potentially to improve the team? Be? Well, I, I don't think you're going to have enough pitching, you know, whether it's bullpen or starting. Um, look, we got a great infield, we got a great outfield. I mean, I, it's I don't think you could ever have enough pitching, and I say that every year because somebody asks me the question every year. But um, you know, what remains? We'll see what remains to be done or not done. I know you don't want to talk about individual players. Would you talk about individual agents? Have you talked to Scott Boris recently? I will not talk about individual agents, but I, I, <laughs> I, 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 have, I have talked to certain agents recently, yes. And, and obviously, any agent that wants to reach out to Cashman, Cashman's phone is, is always on, and he's great about talking to anybody that wants to talk to him.
Are you surprised that a handful of his guys are still free agents? I, I haven't pondered that, to be honest with you. I mean, they're, they're all incredibly talented guys, and I'm sure they're going to land somewhere eventually. And, um, you know, it is what it is. But I haven't really pondered whether or not I'm surprised or not. It seems like every year there's guys still around this time of year. But definitely some high-profile guys. I, I get your point. There's a, there's a lot of uncertainty around RSNs, right? around RSNs elsewhere. I know you guys are in a different situation. But is that something that, looking into the future, concerns you for model? I don't, I don't want to get into baseball economics about RSNs and all that. I'm really here just to talk about the season and all that. But um, look, I, I, I think Rob's made it pretty clear it's a concerning situation. But he's all over it, and baseball's all over it, and uh, the clubs that are involved are all over it. So we'll, uh, hopefully uh, it'll turn out good for everyone in the end. Aaron Boone said you guys were hell-bent on winning a title. Hal, would you characterize the effort that you guys have made throughout the organization as, as hell-bent? to win a title this year? I think so, and I think the attitude is that these guys are hell-bent to win a title. But look, we all know when you get in the postseason, competitive balance being what it is today compared to 10 years ago, let's say, uh, as Cash says, it is a bit of a crapshoot. I mean, look at the clubs that got knocked out round one last year, you know, clubs you wouldn't have thought. Um, so, uh, But we got to get there. That's the whole thing. That's why last year was a failure on every level. We didn't even get there. Once you're there, most teams have a good chance, if not all teams. Um, Things happen sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse, but that's the way the postseason is. In a year that you don't make the playoffs like last year, do you watch the playoffs? I did. I, I watched some. I watched some. Um, it's like I'm a lifelong Vikings fan, and they're never in the Super Bowl, so I don't watch the whole Super Bowl, <laughs> but I, I watch some of the Super Bowl. So same thing. Same how, thing. How, how would you describe your conversations in the offseason with Judge and Cole and some of the concerns that they might have expressed to you about yeah, they, they were involved, and Boone was very involved. He met with our coordinators at the Himes Complex twice in January um, about things we might do differently in, in the minor leagues or might teach differently. Um, all good conversations. And, you know, for instance, with Judge and Cole, and I was just talking to Cole today in, in the dugout, um, you know, there were some concerns that both of them raised last year about not so much the information we give them, but how it's presented to them, how it funnels down, I think was Judge's words, right? How it funnels down to the players. So. We've added a new person in the clubhouse, a guy here from Tampa that is unbelievably versed and intelligent in analytics, but also was a coach, a college coach, actually, I believe. Great working with people, great explaining things and teaching things and listening to what uh, the people he's dealing with had to say. And Judge already met with him one on one over there for an hour or two working with him, and he likes him. So he's going to be a great addition. And again, you know, we so many questions about significant changes, significant changes. We're introducing somebody new into the clubhouse. That's a significant change. As far as I'm concerned. This is Boone's last year under contract. What do you need to see from him to continue get a new deal done? That's, that's something I deal with when the season's over. You know, that's, that's really, it's not something I'm pondering right now. So th there's just so much baseball. You know. Take one or two more. Hal, historically, you guys have not done extensions. You let contracts expire. Would you make an exception, and you have made some exceptions over the years, of at least engaging guys? You did it with Judge. You did it with Cano years ago. Would Soto be in that category of when you would be open to doing that? Yeah, I'm not big on extensions, as you know. We've rarely done them. Um, my concern dealing with that during a season is it's a distraction, or at least it very well could be a distraction. Um, but having said that, if both talking about Soto, if both sides feel very strongly about it and Cash feels very strongly about it, then uh, that's something I, I would consider depending on how the season's going. We just can't have it be a distraction. We just can't do that. Is there more pressure on cash this year just coming off, off the year that you guys had last year? There's more pressure on all of us. Look at me. I mean, look at the bags under my eyes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> There's pressure on all of us, man. The, you know, but we're, we're feeling it, and that's, that's a good thing. We deserve to feel it, and that's going to make us stronger this year, I think. So. How excited are you about the renovation and the stadium and everything that is Very excited. Next year is going to be a whole different building, you know, brand new training room, wet room, weight room, dining room. And then, you know, we're also doing a big renovation up at Yankee Stadium, too. That'll be done on time for opening day, and it's going to be a, a lot of new things in the clubhouse for these guys. And the feedback so far has been very positive. I mean, why don't you tell me? Have you guys heard anything but from the players? Just do they like the new clubhouse? There you go. Okay. Good to hear. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yep.